Hi everyone, welcome to the American Computer Enthusiast Show. My name is Steve Reeves, and we're going to do tonight is we're going to take a, take a look at the U.S. Robotics Pilot 1000, and we're going to talk about some new notebooks. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. In case, you, in case you just tuned in, this is the American Computer Enthusiast Show. My name is Steve Reeves, and we're going to take a look at, well first of all, we're going to take a look at this new uh, Pilot. This is the Pilot 1000. There's a Pilot 1000, a Pilot 5000, and also some expansion things that we'll talk about that you can work on this. Now this is a, it's actually pretty cool. Of course my wife thinks it's kind of goofy, but, um, and I'll explain why she thinks it's goofy after we get going here. But what it is, it's a pen-based sort of, uh, um, organizer. It's a lot like the uh, um, Texas Instruments, the Sharps, all the different organizers, but when it's little and small, I mean it fits in your pocket and uh, you can, it's, it's not much bigger than a normal pocket or it'll fit in your pants pocket. It's pretty durable. It's, um, um, I, I, don't, I haven't sat on it or anything like that, but it's, it's got the glass front and everything in here. It also comes with a real nice case. The case that, um, that it comes with has a front that's hard that actually protects that glass. Um, this is the Pilot 1000. There's also a Pilot 5000. The difference is, and I'll show you here, this is actually the box in case you uh, see, want to see it at the store. I don't know if people can see that or not. I guess you can. Um, there's uh, different versions, like I said, the 1000 and the 5000. And the difference is how much memory comes in it, how much uh, memory installed in it. You can also buy a one megabyte expansion for it where you'd actually take out the, the uh, 128K, which is the 1000, or the 512K, which is the 5000, and you actually stick in a one megabyte sort of a module, sort of a SIM sort of a thing. And up, you can now, when, once you put that in, it actually will store up to 15,000 names. I can't even, I don't have 15,000 friends so I, who I put in there, but um, you can translate things, and I'll actually show that, it has software that comes with it. But the coolest thing about it is, is a thing on the back here, which we have right here. It comes with almost everything you need. It comes with the, with the actual unit itself, the, the pilot, I guess they call it. Uh, it comes with the stand, a little cradle. Now this is pretty cool. And what this does, it just slides in there like that. And you can see that it, it, it'll sit right on your desk and you can actually see it. You can actually work on it if you want to, but you just turn it on, the little button here, and it'll actually turn on. I don't know if you want to switch cameras here. We've got, we've got all kinds of cameras here. Now you can see that this just slides right in here and it just sits on your desk. And you can turn it on and turn it off, the little green button here. Green means go. And uh, now what's on the front here, there's some little buttons on this unit. There's also a button down here on the actual cradle itself. Um, it's got, we'll explain all the buttons in a minute, but it has a little connection down here in the bottom that goes with the little connection on the back of here. And uh, it's, like I said, it's got little buttons on the front. It's got a little scroll button that, that goes up and down, scrolls up, scrolls down, and a little area where you write. And we'll show exactly how that works. You can see it's, it's <coughs> excuse me, it's made by U.S. Robotics. I lost my voice there for a second. Uh, U.S. Robotics, same people that make the modems and things. And on the back here, it's got a sticker. We'll explain the sticker here. This is actually pretty cool, but it's, this is actually the, the handwriting and how you have to write in order to make it recognize your handwriting. And you get real used to it. It's, it's one of those things when you first get it, it takes a, a couple of times to figure out how to write in this little box right here. But it gets, you're getting better and better with, over time. Now on the back of this module right here, you can see there's a cable that comes out. This actually fits and goes on to the back of the, uh, it goes into the serial port right here on the, uh, the back of this computer, which we'll talk about later also. It has a, tw a nine pin, and then it also comes with the, a little adapter, of course that'll trend, you know, change it into a 25 pin. So if you have an older computer, most new computers nowadays come with nine pin serial, but if you happen to have one that has a 25 pin, it actually comes with the adapter. It comes with just about everything you need. The, well, not actually, every, just about everything. It comes with everything you need. Um, it comes with the program, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, but it comes with the disks that load up the actual PC program. 
Now the coolest thing about this whole deal is the little button that's on this um, cradle here. I guess that's what they call it, a cradle. And that's the sink button. And like I tell everybody, it has everything including the kitchen sink, see? Um, but what this button does is it actually will, when you press this button and you're connected to the PC, it will sync the data. Whichever is the newest data, it'll actually figure out what's been changed either on this unit or on the PC. You can enter all your information on your PC also. Now, the, um, I guess my computer shut down. It just shut down because I have it on the battery save mode. That started it back up. But anyway, the, uh, um, what this does is, and you can also, if you change it, if you sync it and it's by mistake, you actually didn't want to change it, you can actually revert back to the old version that you had. And I'll show that on the software when we load it up here. But this is pretty cool. So what we want to do, why don't we might as well go and show this right here and how this works. Um, what's the other thing I was going to show you? There is a little card here. I'll show this up here. I don't think you can see that. But you can see the, the alphabet. An A is actually not an A. It's actually a little line up and a little line down. B is pretty similar to a B. C is like a, just like a C, a D. You can see an E is a little squiggle school E. F is actually a little line and down. You don't make the little thing going across. It recognizes these letters. And you can see a K is kind of strange. It's just a little squiggle. An L looks like an L. An M goes in. You need to, what this, uh, what this actually does, it doesn't want you to pick up the pen. So it tries to figure out the letter the easiest way without having to pick up the pen. So it's usually one keystroke. Where there's a little dot is where you start. And then you, you know, like the L, you go like that. So when you bring this little thing up here, the little unit itself, um, you can actually, we'll just turn it on with the green button, and you can see it comes up with memo list. Now if we hit right here on applications, just with the pen, you can see it, oops, I'm, I'm working sideways here, all right? You can see that it's got an address book, goes into the address book, you can go back to the applications, you can, it has the, the um, um, hardball, that, I actually downloaded some games, they have a bunch of games that are on the US Robotics web page, which, by the way, I'll talk about. I have a slide that comes up, but it's real easy. It's www.usr, for usrobotics.com. And then there's a section on there for um, the pilot, which what we're talking about right now. So you can actually go in there. You can also adjust on the side here the, the um, um, what do you call it? I can't think of what you call it. What, what's the word there? I can't think of the word. Contrast. You can adjust the contrast. I need a little helper here to, so I can remind me of all these words here. But you can see you can move this up and down and you can adjust to make it bright or dark or whatever. But anyway, there's a, um, there's a calculator when you hit calculator. I'm going to try to make this without, with as little glare as possible. But you can see, and you can either do it with your finger if you just want to go here and say 7, 8 uh, times uh, 6 equals. There it is right there. Or you can use a pen. So you can do 7... 74 uh, times 6 equals 444, all right? There's also memory and things like that. But you can see it, it's just if you use it for a calculator. It's a pretty expensive calculator, though. Um, now we can just go back to the applications again. Or you can hit the buttons down here, the fast buttons. So if you just want to go right to notes, for example, it, I mean the calendar, it goes right to there. If you want to go right to your addresses, you hit right there. If you want to go right to your to do right there and if you want to go to uh, your memo list you go to that or you can hit the little applications button which is right here um, you can also see there's a uh, data book if you go to that that's I mean I'm sorry date book and you can see that it actually has the the date that we're, we're doing this right now you can skip right to the next day like Tuesday Wednesday Thursday um, the time you can actually um, just hit over the top of that it actually goes in there and gives you a start time an end time, no time if you just want to put in a, something you have to do that day, you know, no specific time. Hit OK. You can just hit wherever you want right here. You can actually go in there and do the minutes. You can uh, arrow down here if you just hit the little arrow and go down or go up like this. Also, there's a little, on most of the, almost every application is you hit this little I right here and it gives you tips on what to do. And then when you're finished, you just hit right down here on done or finished. I would say it was supposed to be finished, but it's actually done. And we can go in there and hit OK. But you can go in there and just you can see when you hit like right here, um, when you hit like in that spot right there, you can actually start typing right, or typing or writing. Now what's really cool about this is you can take your pen right here and go up and it pops up and a little keyboard pops up. 
So now we can just type in with the key, with this little pen right here. It actually comes with a one pen like this, which is just a nub pen. There's not a ink or anything on the end. And it actually slides right in this little hole right here. So you can see when you lift this up, it comes right out. And when you send in your registration, they actually send you another pen. And you can buy more pens too. And we'll talk about the add-on devices and things that you can buy later. But you can go in here and just say, uh, uh, Dennis, for example, if we go in here and say D, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. D, E, N, T. I usually don't type sideways like this. Dentist. Oh, we made a mistake there. It says Ennist as opposed to Dennis. But we can go right back here and we can actually either block out the whole thing and start over or we can just hit right here with the, with the, um, with the cursor itself and actually go in there and change something like D, E, and there it is, dentist. It says dentist. I know. Like my wife says, this is the funny part that my wife says. is She goes, you know, I could write that faster on my little chief, the little uh, big chief tablet and a pencil. And then when I run out of space, I just get a new one. But it's not as cool as this, you know. But you can also go in here and you can change to, it's got the space, it's got an, a, you know, a QWERTY uh, keyboard. You can go over here and change the uh, numbers and it's got the number pad and all the little things, the symbols like uh, dollar sign and lira. I don't use Lyra very often, but um, little asterisks, and it's got the brackets, and, and over here it's got the plus and minus and slash and, and return and backspace and space, and there's a little, you know, the parentheses and everything else. Or you can go over here to um, international, and it's got all the little, like, little umlau, that's German, uh, over the A's and E's and O's and U's and everything else, and all those strange little characters for international. And you can go back to just hit right here. When you're finished, you just hit done. And, uh, and it does, the one thing I didn't show you, but you can go up here if you bring it back up. It also has the shift key and the cap locks key, so if you want to change it. So whatever you type in here, you can do that. Now the other way you want to do it is if we just hit done, and uh, let's see if I can do this here. We can add, let's add in something else. Let's say we want to type right here. At 10 o'clock, we need to go to uh, school, for example. All we do, is, t is write an S, and you can see an S shows up. And then a C, see the C, H, H, O, see the O? I'm pretty good at this, ain't I? O, L, school. See right there? So you have to write in this little area right here. This is actually called graffiti. And you can see there's two sides to this thing also. Over here is the number side, and over here is the letter side. So if you want to write something with letters, you write on this side. If you want to write numbers, you write over here. So if I go over here and say, if you do like that, that, that makes a space. If you hit it again, it's another space. You just make a little, you make a line across there. If we write over here, we can actually say three, and you can see it makes a three. Two, it make a, makes a two. One is a one. So I wrote on this side of it. See those little marks right there? Or you can, like I said, just bring it up like that and put the keyboard and then it goes into the numbers automatically. So we'll just say done. All right? So we'll go back to applications. Oh, the other thing I forgot to show you here. You can actually look at a, uh, a week. You hit the little week down there and it shows you the week. Um, I'm on the wrong day here, but that's all right. Um, but we can go over there and it shows you the whole week and it shows you that I do have an appointment at this time from 10 o'clock to 10.30, 10 to 11 or whatever, on Thursday the 19th. Same thing, I have a meeting from 1.30 to 2.15 or whatever. Well, I don't even know what time I put in there. But uh, we can also go to, we can say, if you hit go to, it actually has a calendar. We can go specifically to October 26th, and we can see I've got nothing on there. I can put my dad's birthday in there, for example, with, a, with no time. It would just say, when I go to that date, same thing. If I just go to day, it goes directly to October 26th. So you can see this, it's pretty easy to work with. And I've learned a lot just by playing around with it. You can also just do details, and it actually, we have no record in there, but it actually it'll tell you what's going on, it'll print out the day. So if we go back to um, go to, and we'll say September, uh, what was it, 19? Oh, you can see, there it is right there. Now if we hit details, we can actually go in there and say, we can specifically um, put in a record that has information about that, but we don't have anything in there right now. So we'll just go to applications again. And you can see the other thing is, is hardball. This actually is, it's kind of like um, Pong, sort of. 
and it's got the board that goes across the bottom and it actually works with the keys but that thing goes back and forth and the balls go up there and bounce and you try to knock out all these little pieces of walls and these little blocks right here and these are all available these games are available on the internet on their web page on the US Robotics web page the other thing that uh, when you buy it, it actually comes with a package called giraffe which what it is it's falling letters letters start falling down and you need to write down here real fast before it hits the bottom it just what it, what it actually does is it tries to help you um, get your handwriting down to make it work in here so it's you know the G's and F's and capital and it gets harder because it'll start putting capital and you need to make a capital H and then it has numbers that come down and then symbols it gets harder and harder and harder and harder but you get pretty good at it by the time you go through those games we'll go back to applications and you can see here's the hot sink same thing and I'll show how that works there when we put that in there memo pad again this one has there's different I have some memos on here for example we can go in there and go to uh, um, Zyplex IP addresses these are some things that work that I have that IP addresses and you can go in there and add things or whatever let's say we want to subtract something we'll go back here to down and we'll say K's phone number this was my wife's phone number for example now it comes up there now let's say we can't read that it's too small say you're old like me and you need to need bigger text you just hit this little A down here see there's a little A and a big A If we hit that right there you can see it makes it big text and you can switch back and forth between big and small I guess that's the technical term big and small or you go here to delete you can say delete right here and it, do you want to save a backup copy in your PC we will say no and so you could have a little check right there if you want to save it to your back back it up to your PC when you do a backup or a, a hot sink so we just hit OK and it deletes it so now that is not there anymore we can go back in here and just put Steve and you can see there's my name right there and we can just type things in now what's what's really neat about this is if we go to we just make slash a couple of spaces there if you want to make a capital letter all you do is make a line going up like that and then you just type it well I didn't do it there but we just make it back backspace you just go like that and it backspaces that letter what we're out of there so we'll just make a up arrow and then type in S and you can see it makes a capital S if you just make us without making the line go up it makes a small letter lowercase I guess that's the right key. not small big and small uppercase and lowercase if you want to make an E you just do like that V is like that Oop. like that what am I doing here V there's V like I said I usually don't type sideways here As you can see you do Steve I will go back to uh, if we want to go to details on this same thing you can actually uh, file these you can see up in the corner it says unfiled we can go here and we can make it uh, we can put this in ace we can also do business we can do personal and we can do unfiled or you can say here edit the categories we can make our own categories so if you have something specific for uh, church or something like that you can make one called church and so you could have all your notes for church or all your notes for ace we'll just say ace now this when we hit OK you can see now it says ace up there now if we want to see this we can actually say we want to see ace all the business and it'll bring them up accordingly or you can say all of them if you want to bring up all of them but we'll just keep it as ace like that hit done and the same thing we'll go while well, they're telling me I need to take a break uh, we'll just keep talking about this and we'll talk about um, how it all interfaces with the PC as soon as we come back so stay tuned and we'll be right back Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. In case you just tuned in, this is the American Computer Enthusiast. My name is Steve Reeves, and we're talking about the Pilot 1000. This is actually the 1000. There's also, like I said, a 5000 version, and also there's a little slot right here. We don't want to show right now, but you can actually open this up, and you can put um, more a one megabyte uh, memory chip in here, which will allow you to hold. Um, actually, I'll, I'll look on the back of the box. Read it. it says right here the um, it says it somewhere on here. Oh, here it is. The uh, Pilot 1000 will hold up to 500 addresses. 
the, and one year of appointments, which is approximately 600. 600 appointments, that's a lot of, well, I guess that, two a day, I guess. Um, 100 to-do memos and 50 memos. And then it, uh, the 5,000 version, which is, has 512K, will hold up to 2,500 addresses. Four years of appointments, that's a lot of appointments, approximately 2,400. 500 to-do items and 500 memos. So actually, the di so the difference between these two, the 1,000 and the 5,000, is 128K and 512K. And like I said earlier, if you put the one megabyte SIM in here or chip in here, it, it says it'll hold up to 15,000 names and addresses. That's a lot of names and addresses. And again, it also comes with all kinds of different things. You can uh, import, export files, and everything else. The uh, um, it's pretty cool. Like I said, it's real small, and we'll talk about the price. What I want to do first is, let's go to the, to the screen here. Like I said, we're talking about the U.S. Robotics Pilot 1000. Um, like I always show on every show, the uh, ACE hotline, and uh, also um, our, my email address in case you want to uh, leave an email or send me an email, uh, something you'd like to see in future shows, comments about anything, if you have any questions about any, anything that we're talking about on this show today. And also the web pages. Uh, first web page is um, http colon slash slash users.aol.com slash sareves slash steve.htm. That's my web page. And there's been some complaints. And I guess they're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're valid because uh, everybody's complaining it's kind of boring. So I promise within the next 30 days or so, I'll upgrade my uh, web page and make it more fun, all right? Um, and the same thing with the, uh, the next one is uh, um, the Phoenix web page, which is the official ACE web page. And I know they're doing all kinds of things to that too. So if it says it's under construction, don't worry, it's coming. And there's, they are adding more and more things all the time. So um, if you want to go to that one, it's www.phoenix.net slash tilde uh, ace slash acetop.html. Make sure you type in that L right there. Mine does not have an L. All right. Now, like I said, um, mine's kind of boring. I didn't really think it was that boring, but everybody says it is. Um, and it's, uh, but it's more of an information page. Like I usually put on all the, every, anything we talk about, any kind of web page or 800 line or information, I put it on there. So if you miss it or something uh, isn't, you know, you didn't have time to write it all down, you can always get on my web page and download or, go, or t write down the information that's on the web page. I guess they need more flashy graphics and things that can keep people happy. All right? And there, that is the uh, um, web page, www.usr.com, for the U.S. Robotics. And then there, you can also, there's more things you can type after. But if you go to this, it'll go directly to the U.S. Robotics page. And then there's another part, I think it's slash palm, to go to the, uh, uh, like they call these palm tops or something. It's also our slash pilot. I forget what it is right off the bat. Um, Email, the one thing that everyone wants to know, and, and of course it's probably true because nobody can figure out when the show is on. It used to be on like four times a week, now it's on like every day of the week almost. So I thought I'd make a, sh a slide because I can never remember all the times. And this actually got right out of the, uh, the official Warner um, book that has, there's actually a page in here. I, I wasn't going to hold this up, but I decided I might as well. Um, there's actually a page in here, because nobody can ever, can ever figure out, including me, when it's on. There's actually a page on here called Access. See that? Access. If I could uh, look. But it says uh, Houston Community College, HCCS. And if you look on the bottom on down here, it actually is broken down to days. And it tells, if you just look for the American Computer Enthusiast, and it actually, I wrote down all the times that are in this, mag, in this magazine. It's also in the Chronicle magazine. If you look under, it's under the E2. So if you look under, on, on the, in the Chronicle, um, shit, you know, the television page or whatever you want to call it. If you look under here, there's a E1 and E2. And it's usually under the, uh, um, on the side here, it says ACE. There's AHC TV, E1, E2, and Municipal. We're the E2 is what it is. So if you look in here, you can also find out when it is. So we are in the magazines. It's just sometimes hard to find. Um, so I wrote down the, the, the times that we're on. We're on every Sunday night. And that's usually the first time the show is on, Sunday at 7 p.m. 
Mondays at 7 p.m., Wednesdays at 7 p.m. I don't know what happened to Tuesday there. Thursdays, we're still on Thursdays at 1 o'clock in the morning. Like I said, I don't know who, who watches then, but I'm sure there are some people that watch at 1 o'clock in the morning. You can set your VCR and watch it at 1 o'clock in the morning. We're also again, uh, again on Thursdays at 7 p.m. and then Saturdays at 8. So we're, only, we're, we're not on on Tuesdays and Fridays. So you can go out and have fun every Tuesday and Friday night because you don't have to worry about missing us, all right? So these are the times. So if this changes or anything, we'll let you know. But this is the time that's actually in the September um, Warner Cable Book, and uh, hopefully it'll be this way for a while. Like I said, we used to be on four times, now we're on uh, six times a week. Probably more than you want to see us, but I'm sorry. Um, but there, that's the times right there. You got, everybody got them written down? Okay, good. All right, so let's, uh, let's get out of this end show, and we'll just go back to the show in the uh, um, pilot. Again, this is in case you just tuned in. This is the Pilot, U.S. Robotics Pilot 1000. It's a little handheld, little, you can fit it in your pocket. It's actually like a little organizer. And unlike most organizers that have a little keyboard that you type things in, this one actually has a, um, a pen, and it's pen-based, and you write in this little box down here. We'll switch down to here. I like to keep the, control guy, the guy in the control room hopping around in there. It has this little box down here that you actually write in. So we'll turn it on again, and you can see we're right back to where we were. It actually, that's one thing cool about this also, is it remembers where you were. When you turn it on, you don't have to, it doesn't have to boot up or anything. It has like non-volatile RAM or memory that you just turn it on, it comes right back up to where it is. And again, you can go in here, we'll, we'll do this. We'll go back to uh, done, done, it's like meat. Uh, we'll go back to applications. There's also the memo pad, that's where we were. Also memory. Now, right now, because I've got all these games on here, it's got a, a lot of the memory is taken up. But you can see it actually shows you, you can actually delete an application. If you put a game on here and decide you don't want it, or something, if you never use the memo pad, for example, you can actually delete it and save memory. You see, I've got in my to-do list, I have no records, zero records. I think that is zero. Uh, memo pad, I have seven. And we can hit this little down arrow right here. And you can see I've got 90 records in my address book. I've got two, that's, oh, seven, I'm sorry, seven in my date book, and systems, of course, not, not applicable. I can never understand it. Is it non-applicable or applicable? And then you go over here, and you can also, that's according to records. If you want to see what it is in size, it actually shows you how big these are. Like the date book is only taking up 1K, the address book is 9K, system is taking up 35K. If you page up here, you can see some of those games are pretty small, like puzzle is 4K, Mine Hunt, which is kind of like the one, it's actually exactly the same as the one in Windows, is 9K. And uh, Sub Hunt, which is actually kind of, it's kind of a cool game, is the biggest game. That's 18K. All right? And we'll just say, we don't want to delete anything. I'm afraid to delete something right now. But I did have some other games in here that were kind of goofy, so I just deleted them. Uh, we'll go back to applications. Actually, the other reason I deleted them, because I had no memory left on this thing, because I put on too many games. If you go to uh, Mine Hunt, you can see it looks just like the Mine Hunt. We can go over here and just hit, ooh, pretty good right there. Nice first guess. See, oh, I blew it up. Anyway, same thing here. If we go here to the little eye, it actually has the tips and the rules. You can go over here and you can page down. You can page down. It shows you exactly the instructions of exactly how to, how to play that. But yeah, that's, it's, it gets on your nerves after a while if you play it enough. But we can go to New, brings up another a new game. And we can go down here to applications, and it comes back to the applications. We can go over here to um, puzzle. Puzzle is just that little thing that you can slide that. This is a really annoying game. I never win at this thing, but you can move that around, you know, and go over here and move that up and down or whatever. I'm trying to get any glare. You can go here to new puzzle, and it'll just bring up a, a different setup with different numbers or whatever on there. If we go back to applications again, you can go over here to preferences. Now this is things that you can set up. Now there's all types of different preferences. You can set the time, the date. It is the right date, isn't it? Sh automatic shut off right now. I've got it set to two minutes. You can set it up to turn off automatically after three minutes of non-use. You can turn on the sounds. Actually, I thought I had them on, but I guess it didn't. You can also turn on the alarm. This has a little a timer in here or a clock with a little alarm and it'll beep when your uh, appointment comes up. You can also go down here or go up here to general you can see there's under format, you can set up the time, the date, the week when it starts. If you want it to start on a uh, 
Sunday or a Monday or whatever. Uh, you can also, if you go down here to uh, Sunday, we can say you can change it on, we'll just keep it on Sunday. You can change your numbers to bring, you know, decimal points or a comma, however you want it to be. Uh, you can make your date and time. You can see there's slashes or dashes or, or without anything, you can do it like that. Same thing with hours. You can do hours, minutes, seconds, or however you want to do it. You can, with the colon or slash or whatever you want to do is keep it the way it is the default you go up here to formats again and you can see there's shortcuts and right now there's things like when you're typing something in if you just type in di it knows you mean dinner uh, with this down here if you just type di it, go, it types in dinner if you do lu it automatically types in lunch or meet me is meeting or timestamp you just to the uh, it's ts for timestamp and if you type in TS, it automatically puts the date and time in your document or whatever you're doing, a little memo that you're doing. You can also go in there and do delete things or put in a new one or edit. If you want to go in there and say edit, it actually shows the shortcut and the actual text. It'll tell you what types out there. We'll just hit OK. And we'll go back up here to shortcut. And the next one is digitizer. Now what this does, I really shouldn't have done this, but that's all right. What this does, it actually tells you to hit on the digitize, on the actual screen, where the X is to make sure that this thing works the way you want it to be. So it doesn't actually say how often you should do that, but I guess if, if you're writing and something's not, it's not hitting where you're actually hitting, you might want to do that digitizer setup and it actually will set it up accordingly so that it's right. All right, we'll go down here to uh, applications again. And the next one was security. You can actually go in there and show uh, there's, you can actually set things up to be private records and you can show or hide them. You can set up a password. Right now I've got no password. It's unassigned. Password features, if you forget your password, you can go in there and change it. And turn off and lock the device. So if, uh, you don't, if somebody you don't want to look at something, you can actually turn it off and lock it and then you have to have your password to get back in. Go back to applications. Uh, there's sub hunt. This is actually kind of the, the, the boat goes across the submarines go down, down here. Same thing, this works with, uh, you just see that it's dropping the depth chargers right there when you hit that button, or the ones the front depth chargers, and you try to blow up that submarine, right? He gets that, oh, it blew up the submarine, great, huh? Um, and it works with this, with the keys, and you can move the, this thing back and forth, and eventually it'll start shooting uh, torpedoes up at the submarine, I mean at the ship up on the top of the wall. That's you up there on the top, by the way. Go back to applications, and there's more things. See this little arrow down here, you hit the arrow, Oop, applications. Hit that little arrow down there. And you can see there's another one, my to-do list. Now you can see, you can do it just as fast down here, or you can do it with these buttons. So if you don't want to go to the applications, you can do it real fast by just hitting the buttons. This one here, again, you can just go over here and bring it up there. And, uh, well, we need to start it, I guess. And we have, a, um, we go in there and put in a new one. I forgot to hit new. And again, you can prioritize this. I usually don't work sideways like this, like I said, about 20 times. You can prioritize this according to the uh, uh, number. Like right now, I've got a priority of one. We go over there, and uh, we can actually prioritize this thing. You can actually put it in the same thing you could before. All, business, personal, unfiled, or edit categories. If we want to put in there and make another category, we can say, um, you know, business or personal or whatever. We'll just type in ace. So we'll make an arrow up and type in A, there's A, an arrow up would make a C, so we make a capital C, arrow up, and then an E, and there we have ACE. We hit done, and now if we hit this, there should be an A, see right there. So now all the to-dos having to do with ACE, like remember to do the show, or remember to not talk funny or whatever, you know. So we'll go back here and we'll say uh, show, and you can, here's where you can prioritize things, sort by priority or the due date. You can also show completed items, show only due items, show due dates, show priorities or whatever. We just hit OK. And let's say, we, let's go in here and hit new, for example. We should have done this before. Now we just type in there, uh, do show. Do, there's O, O, space. So we just make a little dash. Show. Do show, all right? And we can prioritize that. And if we go to uh, details, for example, we can prioritize it according, we'll say it's a priority three. And it's category of ACE, the due date, we can actually give it a date. 
we'll say today, and it's a private message, and we'll say OK. And it says, you have marked this private. And you, that way, what it's telling me is we need to show private records, because uh, when we earned the priorities, we said don't show private records. So, so we need to change that. So you can see that right now it shows the date of 916. The to do is do show, and it's a priority of three. All right? So now we'll go back to applications. But what we're going to do, let's go to menu, for example. If we go, let's start up like um, puzzle, for example. And we'll go here to menu. When you hit menu, it actually a little menu pops down at the top. Solve it or about. If we hit about, it actually shows a little like info or um, help screen, I guess. Help, info, about, whatever. It actually shows you the, uh, that this is pilot, the puzzle, version 1.0, hit OK. The other thing is you can go directly to the calculator by just hitting this button right here. It goes to the calculator. You can also do find. If you put in there find, you can say find Steve and it'll go directly to the record that has Steve in it or whatever. Or Ace or whoever name. You can actually just type in a couple characters and it'll find that also. Like we'll type in uh, B and we'll say U and C and hit OK. And it searches and you can see right there. Bill Buckley. There's a Bill Buckley's, uh, that's his beeper number. Everybody want to beep him? I'm just kidding. Um, also, you can see Meet with Buckley and Buckley Leaves or whatever. Anything after that, B-U-C-K, it actually comes up and searches everything for Bill Buckley. All right, we'll just cancel out of that. And we'll go back here to, uh, um, same thing on the buttons are down here. I just wanted to show this one more time. This button right here, if you hit this, this is the memo. You can go here to 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 do. This is little scroll up and down. Since we have nothing there, we can't really scroll. But let's go to the addresses, and now you can see that you can scroll down. And when you scroll down, or you can hit this little up and down arrow right here and do it like that. Same thing. You can do a lookup. If we hit right there, we could have put Buckley, and it would show Bill Buckley right there. Um, I'm picking on Bill Buckley. I don't know why, but um, if we want to go to Tony Parsaletti friend of mine in Toledo. You can go in there, you can see, you can enter everything. Last name, first name, title, company, home. You can actually set these to whatever. There's all different types of numbers. You can go down here and hit uh, down. If you hit down. And you can see there's other, there's email address, city, state, zip. And you also have custom. If you hit custom, you can actually go in there and put dog's name or whatever, or, or your kids, or whatever what kind of car he drives, or whatever. You can customize things. Anyways, they're telling me to take a quick, quick break. When we come back, we're going to take a, a look at the software that you actually can sync these and see how they all work. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. In case you just tuned in, this is the American Computer Enthusiast Show. My name is Steve Rees, and I'm the host. And we're talking about the pilot, the U.S. Robotic Pilot 1000. Actually, we're talking about all the different. There's a Pilot 1000 and a Pilot 5000. And this is the box that it comes in, you know, just in case you want to see what the box looks like. And a picture of it exactly, you know, there's a little cradle, and we'll talk about that in just a minute here. And uh, the one thing that I wanted to talk about before we went any further are prices. The Pilot 1000 the one that we're using right now, is roughly $300. I've seen them all over for like $299. That's the Pilot 1000, which comes with 128K. The Pilot 5000, which comes with 512K, goes for about $349. I've actually, I've seen them for between $349 and $369, somewhere around there. And that, again, that comes with 512K. Then if you buy the one megabyte module, that's $149. And that, um, when, you, when you buy that, you actually take out the 128K module or the 512K module. So you can grow into it if you run out of space on the 128 or the 512. You can take those out, put in the one meg module, and that's like, like I said, about $149, somewhere around there, $150. And then there's some other things you can buy. I don't remember all the prices of everything, but there's a, a little thing you can put this in that goes on your belt buckles. You can be a real nerd, you know? You can also a little like, uh, 
Franklin organizer sort of a thing, day timer that has a little slot in the front so you can put this in the front so you can take your notes and have it in there. Um, there's also a little cable so you don't have to use this little uh, cradle. Say for instance you're on the uh, on the road, you don't want to have to take this cradle with it. They actually just have a cable that plugs into the little the little connection right here on the back and it plugs in here and your serial port on your notebook or your computer wherever you might be. So you don't have to take this um, cradle with you. And that way you actually just hit the button on the on the software and you don't have to hit the button on the cradle and it actually syncs the two things together. All right. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I want to show the software, um, but first what we're going to do is we're going to do a hot sync. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this hot sync um, software right here and I'm going to hit the little button. Why don't we just show this? In case you uh, just tuned in and you didn't see this, what this is, this little cradle thing I'm talking about. This is the cradle and this just slides right in here and it sits on your desk. And there's this little button right here called sync. And when I hit this, let's turn it on first and we hit this little button, you can see on here it actually shows something that's actually happening. It's synchronizing memo pad, to-do list, you know, and everything else, and it says it's finished. It says, what does it say actually? Local sync and modem sync. You have a choice. Since we've got this sync right now locally because we have it on the COM1, um, it's the local sync. You can also do it over the modem if you want to do that. You can actually dial in and go over by the modem if you want to do that way. So. Now we'll go to the screen here and let's just hit this. You'll see that what happens is when I hit this also, it also shows up on the screen. Identifying user, I'm set up as Steve Reeves and it's a cool little icon there. It shows you that it's updating and synchronizing everything. Since we didn't change anything, it didn't have a whole lot of things to do. But every time you add something to either the pilot desktop, which is right here, this little icon right here. By the way, this is a like a RAM resident program that actually stays loaded so that you don't have to load it every time you want to sync it. Now you can put it in your startup so it's automatically every time you use it or you can just start it up if you want to sync the two devices. But we'll go in here to pilot desktop and this again um, is, is, is real easy to use. It's just like any other organizer program, Sidekick. Um, there's all types of different organizer programs and what's really cool about is everything that I've been able to try and I have some different devices here um, I mean, I have, uh, I, because I have all kinds of different software, because I'm a nerd, you know, I have a uh, Lotus Organizer, I have a uh, Sidekick, I have all those different things, and I have names and addresses in all those. Don't ask me why. I guess I do it just to see if I can actually import and export them. But every single thing that I tried to import into this worked. I was able to, even strange things, that weren't even on the list of things that they say you could import. Like, for example, my Texas Instruments Organizer that I have, you know, with the regular keyboard. We showed this on a show before. This one actually has a Windows program that's also on the computer here that you can export. So I can do all my uh, input on here or I can do it on the computer. I can export it and actually take it into here. So depending on which one I want to use or which one I want to take, it, say your wife uses this one and you use this one, you can actually sync all your messages and all your uh, phone numbers and addresses and names so that you have two different devices but you can actually have the same information on both of them. Now every so often there's some little glitch. For example, the, uh, when I did the first time, when I brought it across, you can, I'll even show you on the names and addresses, you can see on the right hand side over here, it actually isn't right. Because if I double click on this, you can see that it actually has last name, it has everything together. Uh, Blackwell, Deb, Greg, Debbie, and Cadworks. So what I actually have to do is, is go in there and kind of cut and paste and move things down to the company name and things like that if I want to do that. You can see the first name actually came across. I don't know if you can see that or not. First name is actually his phone number. So what, you, what, what I learned real fast is when you translate some of these things across, you want to, when you, it'll actually bring up a little dialog box and tell you what matches what. You can match first name with first name, of course. You know, you can actually you know, uh, work number and mat make sure it matches your work number. Little lines that go across, and you can match all these things so that the headings are the same. Because every so often you might have something like uh, um, address two. Well, if you go to another package, it may not have address two. It only has address just one address line. For example, that's what this has. So if it has another line, for example, like your suite number, you may want to match that so it matches up to something else, so that you can always copy it over. Or if you have something that's not actually on one and it's on the other like one may have a, a place for a mobile phone number and the other one doesn't so you want to make it like for example it might be good on this one to actually put it on custom 
That way you can, which is down here, you can modify this and change it to whatever you want so that you don't lose all your numbers that you're in and you can just cut and paste and put it wherever you want. So you can go in there, it's got last name, first name, title, it's got all types of different things, you know, an email and again you, again, you can customize this to make it work. There's work, there's home, fax, other, email, you can categorize it like we did before, like business, and put it under business, address, city, state, custom, notes. You can attach a note to it. You hit right here and a little note editor comes up. And you can go in there and cut and paste. It has cut and paste, just like uh, any other notepad or whatever. Go in there and cancel. You can also go under details and it shows real fast. You can actually go in there and change the phone number one. You can, if you always look at fax, you can change the first one to fax. But we'll change it to work. You can also go show and list is work. You can save as the default or whatever. You can change it. Even each one can be changed. So if, you, if it's under your uh, friends, you don't care about their work number, you can make their home the first category if you want to do that. So we'll just hit cancel. Uh, to do, same sort. Of, there's exactly the thing. I don't know if you can read that or not, but there's category three. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, not category three, but we, um, we did it. Uh, uh, what's, uh, What's the word? I can't think of the word again. I'm losing, I'm losing my mind tonight as I'm speaking. I'm getting old, that's the problem. Um, uh, you can go in there and do, uh, do the show, and there's the date right there, which means it's today. We can do no date, we can do tomorrow, we can do uh, end of week, end of month, or choose a date. And if we're finished, we can actually just hit right there and we can check that. That means it's finished, all right? You can also go here and add the things. You can change the priori oh, priority. That's the word. Jeez, it's written right here. Priority. Priority one, two, three. We can change it to a priority one. And we can say the due date, categorize it. Also add a note to this, private, complete. Hit apply and you can see it change it to a category one. I mean a priority of one. All right, memo. Here's all the memos. And you can see when you hit it here, it actually brings up the information over here. And you can hit Sprint, uh, Zyplex, Singapore information, Steve. There's that same exact thing, Steve, Steve. And you can ex see exactly what we want to look at. We, again, we can go here and say, just want to see the ace ones. And it brings up just Steve because I categorize that to ace. So if we go here, change it to all, it shows all my memos. We can go in there and do hot sync. It's got the hot sync right up here on top. So if you, you know, you're off, you're, you know, it's on the back of the page or you don't want to hit the button there or you have that cable that's hooked up instead of the little cradle, this is where you do it right here. You can also do the setup, and you can set it up to COM1, COM2. You can set it up your modem. You can set up the speed. Of course, I usually want it as fast as baud but you can actually set it up according to your baud rate. You can tell it what kind of modem. It's kind of funny. It automatically defaults to the U.S. robotics modem. Isn't that funny? Um, but you can go in there and set it up to whatever you want, megahertz or uh, practical peripherals or whatever. We'll just keep it U.S. robotics. And the setup string, but we'll just keep it local as fast as possible. Also, there's help. The help on here is pretty good too. It tells you everything you'd want to know about how to use this for local or modem, the speed, the serial port, whatever. And again, it's also in the manuals that come with it. But we'll just close out of here. And also on this thing, we can go in there, you can cut, you can paste, you can uh, uh, find, just like you could do in there. Let's do the same thing. Let's do Buckley. Buckley and say find. And, oh great. Well, we don't want to match the whole word, no, and we can do that. We'll just say fine. Well, because oh, I'm seeing it's, it's not finding any Buckley in the memo pad, and that is true. Where on the pilot itself, it actually looked through, no matter where you were, it actually found that Buckley, even though I was in the calculator, it went out and find, found that name in the address book. We'll just hit cancel. And also, you can see there's a new item. We can put in a new item or help. You can save the disk, save all, print. You can print these all out. If you go to print, for example, you can set up, you know, for your uh, laser jet, you can say just the view categories, the memos. You can do just the first memo if you want, or select the memo that you want, number of copies, whatever you want to do there. Tools, you can go under categories. You can set up your categories here. Just like you could on the unit itself, you can go in there and set up a new one, delete one, or rename it if you want to do that. Also under here, you can set up options. This is where you can set up um, where your hot sync manager is. You can put it in the startup. Right now, I've got it in the startup folder. So when I start up the computer, it automatically is ready to sync no matter when I want to do anything. It's always sitting backward. It's loaded in RAM. You can also do it here available only when pilot, is, uh, pilot desktop is running or manual. That means 
If you don't want it in your startup and you only use this thing every so often to sync it, you just want to start it up by um, hitting on the uh, icon. Under date book, same sort of thing that you can do on the unit, se unit itself. And again, if you change anything here, it actually sends the settings over to this unit so that it syncs things automatically, which is pretty cool. Under view, you can, here's where you can set up the date book, the address book, just like you can over here on this buttons here. Edit, there's cut and paste, a new memo, find. And under help, you can see there's a, um, office compatible. You can actually make this thing to uh, similar or whatever to uh, Microsoft Office, some of the hot keys and toolbars and things like that. And there's some software and things that load up when you load it up. It'll ask if you want to load up everything or whatever. And this does work with Windows 3.1 and Windows 95. Windows 3.1, it actually loads the Win32 drivers, so, because it apparently needs the speed, and it's a pretty big program in the way it works and everything else, and you want it as fast as possible. So it loads the Win32 drivers when you load it from the disks. So actually, two of these disks are Win32 Win Disk 1 and Win32 Disk. You can load, again, when you load it up, it'll ask you, do you want to load the tutorial? There's a, tu tu a tutorial, a tutorial that comes with it. That allows you to go through it, shows you how to do everything, and, and uh, you know, the very first time I went through it just to see what it was like, some people may find it kind of slow, but it actually is pretty good. It goes through every single feature that comes with this thing. And also under help, you can find out about the desktop. Of course, of course this is version 1.0 because it's brand new. And if there's new versions, I found out that they will put the new versions or updates out on the web page, or they'll send it to you. You can download it. There's a... Um, there's different pages besides the web page. You can find it on CompuServe and different places like that, America Online, and you can find the games and different things that are on there. We'll hit OK. The other thing is you can see down here on the bottom, you can actually drag this stuff to the clipboard or drag it to MS Microsoft Word. So if we want to go over here and we can actually drag this down and put it right into Microsoft Word, it'll actually load up Microsoft Word and put the information that was in that um, memo and it puts it automatically into Microsoft Word. Now, I'm not going to, I don't have it, there's not much information, so I'm not going to do that, but you can see it drags it and puts it right in there. So, same thing, I've got all these different pages and, and whatever. All right? Uh, you can also list by order of entry or alphabetical. Let's put it in alphabetical, hit OK, and it puts it in alphabetical order. So. It works the way you want to work, and you can see that it's pretty flexible, and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. The other thing is, like I said, you can put it down here in the, into the clipboard. You can make it private, categorize it, however you want to do it. We'll just keep it, let's put it ace, all right? So that's, that's pretty much the pilot. Um, like I said, it comes in the little the 1,000, the uh, 5,000, it comes with a little case, it comes with the little um, a cradle, comes with a little adapter, plugs in there, comes with the software, pretty much comes with everything you need to get started. And then, like I said, there's some accessories and things you can buy, and it comes with actually, you can go on here and look at it, or you can go on their web page. It's got all the accessories you can buy on the web, on the, that are on the web page. You can order them. They sell them at most computer places around town. And also the, uh, like I said, extra cables, extra pens, everything like that. So I thought what I'd do now is talk about, uh, this is a new computer that I have here, and I thought I'd talk real fast about this computer. I only have about three minutes left. I like to talk as much as humanly possible here. Um, this is a, uh, the NEC Versa 4080H. This is a Pentium 120. Um, it's an active matrix screen. We're running it right now at 800 by 600. It'll go up to 800 by 600 on the screen, and we've got it through the monitor and also through the, uh, the monitors up so you can see it. Um, 800 by 600, it'll go up to 1024 by 768 on an external monitor, but on the screen itself, it'll go up to 800 by 600. I think it's like a 10.4 inch um, screen, and uh, there's a new model that's coming out, which is the uh, 6000 version, 6000 version, and it actually has a bigger screen. I think it's 11.3 uh, or 12.1 inches. It goes almost to the edge of the, the actual notebook. Um, this one is a... Uh, um, 10.1 is what it is. I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't know. It's probably no point in showing you. But um, now this thing is pretty cool. It has uh, the little uh, finger pad up here on the top right here. Can you see that? And it's got the buttons here. It also has the uh, PCMCI slots on the side over here. It's got um, on the side, this is a multimedia notebook. 
And what this is, it's got uh, uh, the, the uh, little connections on the side here. I hope you can see this. He's, he said he's going to zoom in here. Let's see if, I don't know if this will work. But uh, it's got the uh, speakers, so you can put in a, um, a speaker jack, so if you have little multimedia speakers. Um, there's also the headphones. There's the, uh, like I said, the microphone, the speakers, and also a little volume control right here. And on the other side, there's actually a, a little LED readout right here, which you probably can't see, but that's all right. You can also put it in sleep mode, so it'll automatically just turn off, and when you turn it back on, it comes up exactly where you were. Like I said, here's that little uh, mouse pad or, or a finger pad and the buttons down here. It's also, which is really cool, it's got speakers up here, up in the corners. So you can actually play, right now I've got this uh, uh, three and a half inch floppy in the front. Let's see if we can do this without goofing it up. Um, let's, I'm going to just shut down here so I can do this better because I can't um, do two things at once here. Um, so let's just shut it down and it turns off automatically. This is uh, set up for Windows 95 so it automatically knows you have that. So when you exit out it automatically shuts down the unit. So let's do this. Let's, now that I got this all goofed up here, let's disconnect some of this stuff. I'm probably going to be sorry I did this but um, we'll unplug that. We'll unplug the mouse and unplug this. I think we're done showing it on the screen, hopefully. You can see on the back here, it's got the uh, mouse port or keyboard, mouse or keyboard. It's got the serial port, parallel port, and also the monitor port. Over here is a pretty cool thing, a little garage door type thing. And what it has is a little port replicator. This actually fits right on here. And uh, when it slides in there, it actually gives you more places, a, po a mouse and a keyboard and the same sort of information and a power. So if you have a, if you want to uh, put something and you don't want to disconnect it all the time, you can put that on there. Or if you want to, a little doohickey thing right here that actually doubles this port so you can see you have a mouse and a keyboard. It also has the, uh, I'm talking too fast here, it has the uh, uh, battery charger and then this little three and a half inch floppy actually comes out, pops out of the front and you can replace it with a CD-ROM. This is actually a 6x CD-ROM, which is pretty cool. Or you can replace it with a battery. So you can take that out and put a second battery in there. But tell me I need to wrap it up. So we'll, uh, I've got way too much stuff here, not enough time. So I want to thank everybody for watching. My name's Steve Reeves. This has been the American Computer Enthusiast Show, and we'll see you next week.